I think it's the Ryan Pohl Chicago Bears offseason. In the huddle, we're not the huddle. What do you think about him? The future is now. We are building an organization here that will be highly successful on the field. Our goal is to win the division every year, to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, and to win a Super Bowl. That takes time, that takes people, and that makes sure that we build it the right way. Yeah, the process really started on January 12th, the Thursday after the, our last game. And really, the first thing was to hire the coordinators. You know, the goals were really to, uh, you know, hire guys that were super talented, like I said, but also, you know, are, are accountable, hold each other accountable, are adaptable, are leaders, and are able to really help and partner with our players to improve them as well. For me, it's been, you know, I feel like it's been very lucky, but also a mix of luck and hard work that's, that's led me to this point. Uh, there's been great experiences. Every, every experience has been so unique in different stops along the way, and just try to do my best to learn and figure out what each stop has to offer for me. Matt was at Dallas. He was a linebacker's coach there, and I was coaching the defensive line. I became acquainted with him through my good friend, Rod Marinelli. When Rod likes somebody, that's probably somebody that you're going to end up liking. When the time and the opportunity presented itself for us to finally get a chance to work together, I was excited because of who was on the end of that call. Obviously, the Chicago Bears, but it's somebody that you know and that you trust and that you have a lot of respect for. Obviously, Eric and I have been friends for a long time just by knowing each other through the league. And he's a wonderful person. He's a great football mind. His expertise is in the defensive line, so we're really going to enhance that group as we go. But he's going to really be helpful uh, being the defensive coordinator, organizing the game plan, and then helping me during the week. We want our pressures to really complement the different looks that we present. When you can generate pressure with Ford, it feels like you're, you're sending a fifth guy. When you do decide to deploy that guy, at times, you can really overwhelm the offense. You know, as, as the play calls go, you know, that balance of, uh, you know, the analytical approach, but also the feel and flow of the game, you know, there is a, a combination of the two that go into it. Shane's a fabulous teacher, has a wonderful offensive mind, got great passion and enthusiasm for the game. His leadership skills are, are dynamic, and we're excited to bring him in. And he's done nothing but uh, showing us that since he's been here. While Eric Washington and Shane Waldron settle into their new roles, Bears special teams coordinator Richard Hightower steps up to lead the East team at the East-West Shrine Bowl, seizing a unique coaching opportunity. Reps, 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 reps. Let's go, let's go, right? Stack days, let's stack days, huh, Walt? Sure. Stack days. Y'all ready to go today? Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go. Go give me one of them balls like you did on that tape, huh? I knew Hightower would be great. Um, you know, he's a, he's a head coach in waiting, and I'm excited to see what's, what's in the future for him. We're going to find out who loves ball today, right? <laughs> in the huddle, we're not the huddle. In the huddle, we're not the huddle. You can do everything until we get the team without those pads. What about something on something, Coach? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> mental reps, man. Still a mental rep. Still a mental rep, right? Stick those foot in the ground, get movement. Who going to win this rep? Watching our guys coaching there was really cool to watch, and also, you know, us being able to see those guys get coached. That's good. So you show cover down like a number two, like it's covered three, and then you're gonna start getting whipped because you get an apex between the end man and number two. I got the play call. Yeah, make sure you get it every time, and then get you a mental rep. Right. That's how it is in the NFL. You know, get all the reps, but you got to get them here. How does he learn in the classroom? How does he react to coaching and all the processes of that? And uh, so good to get that inside information. Get off, let's play physical. Right, you guys got four places. Ball up right here. We attended the East-West game and Senior Bowl this year. Both were really good experiences, just to spend more time with the players, but also see them compete on the field as well. There you go. Good, good, good. Boom, flip the hips. Good. Back first. Boom, back, back. Good. That's fine. Boom. It's all right. Flip the hips. Flip the hips. Just to get up close and personal with these guys, but also see the guys move is really important to us in terms of seeing traits, how they compete, and we're always looking for guys to make plays. Through the line! Through the line! Pony. 
You can get that step and you can hinge at a 45 a little bit just so you got both gaps, you know what I'm saying? Open up, come down. Good. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Come on. Another touch point, you know, all fall, we gather information and, and that's really the next step in terms of sitting down and getting to know these players, asking some of the tough questions. I think the biggest thing is really what motivates these players. Uh, why do they play the game? And what are they going to do for the Chicago Bears to take us to the next level? Anticipation. Boom. Anticipation. Boom. Up high. Good. Nice. And when you look back, don't just slow down. When you look back, you slow down a little bit. That was great. Great squeeze. Good. Good. Two on the ground. Two on the ground. Run your hips. Rip it out. Rip it out. So I think one of the things I'm looking forward for the combine this year is to see all the players that we are going to either interview or watch one drills, but then to see it kind of come full circle on draft day, see them get drafted, and then how quickly they show up in our facility. Kind of everything, this is to me, is like the start of a new season here at the Combine. With the Combine, I always come a day earlier than everybody. Um, I work closely with our college scouts, our pro scouts, GM, assistant GM, and as well as our directors. Um, the nickname they give me all the time is kind of that centerpiece, that nervous system. You know, we want to bring good people in. Um, and, and with Ashton and with Darby, um, they've done such a great job. Um, we want to continue to bring in uh, those types of people uh, to help our organization grow. I have to pretty much communicate with all different departments within our building. She's, she's really the glue of the operation. Uh, everything kind of goes through her to make sure everything's smooth. Uh, we're hitting all the, the check boxes that we need to hit throughout the process. I'm responsible for acquiring all of our game and practice footage, um, getting that into our video system, marrying that with all the data that we uh, receive from different avenues, um, and then managing our in-house video network, um, servers, computers, laptops, everything our coaches and players use, and personnel staff use to watch the film that we provide for them. What stands out about Darby's is her leadership skills, um, her ability to really make sure that her team's run at a high level. To be a woman working in the NFL, I think one day I look forward to this not being a topic, but I recognize the point of why it still is. Being the first female Bear Scout, um, I view myself as someone that can bring others along, uh, learn from those who are already here. It's setting an example for others. If you can see it, you can believe it, right? It means a lot uh, for women of color, uh, for women, just across the globe, the future is now. Tell your story, stay in the moment, be relentless. I think it's important that you always remember that you have that little bit of dog in you because I mean the wheat get eaten in this business all the time. So you have to have a little bit of that savage in you to no keep question. going and to keep thriving. The combine in February really kicks off the unofficial start of the offseason. I, I think it's the Ryan Pohl Chicago Bears offseason because the Bears control the offseason and we get to see what they do during this time and it's going to have massive implications on the Bears franchise for the next decade plus. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. good. Yeah, we see it as an opportunity to, to continue to improve our roster. Um, we saw the benefits of, of last year's draft, um, and we're going to continue to see the benefits with this upcoming uh, opportunity that we have. Yeah, we, we are super excited about this year and this offseason, but again, it's got to be deliberate, it's got to be thorough, and we got to do it the right way, and that takes time, and we can't skip steps here, so we got to make sure we're doing our due diligence every step of the way.
That is beautiful. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very busy. Uh, in the mornings, we start with interviews with the players. Uh, we schedule those in 20 minute blocks. I uh, wanted we'll to do 45 over the whole period of the combine. You should have seen every time like a defensive lineman is asked, like, what position did you play in high school? And they go, linebacker. Flu's like, perks up and starts writing his notes. I like when they say running back. Right. We spend the afternoon watching the players on the field and doing drills, doing their testing drills, um, but also doing the, the football part too. Um, so it's good to kind of pair the testing with their movements as well. I love this kid. Yeah. If he's there, we'll take him. Yep. Take two of them. It's a really good group. By all accounts, what you hear from people is it's a strong draft at the top, probably 16 first round talents. So the Bears are in position to get two legitimate first round players, including the single best player in this draft. Um, this draft has a lot of talented players, um, guys that play at a very high level that it can impact the game. But there's also some guys that have uh, really good wiring and, and good traits that are gonna allow us to be competitive um, and also grow our culture as well. You know, so really just personality, interaction. It's a small, short time you have with them, but you can still get information. Yeah, it's, it's so important bringing the right guys in, you know, and, that's, and we've done that. And we've uh, built a solid foundation for the future um, with our first two draft classes, you know, with our first, uh, our first two free HC classes. And uh, you can feel that, feel that building up. And uh, like I've always said, it's always about the love of the game. And uh, every single one of those players that come into our building love football. And you can see it by the way they practice, the way they prepare, and the way they play the game on Sunday. And that's uh, going to always be the first step. Detail, recall was great. I thought it was cool, like even the um, reflecting on the teams that we had up on the screen, like to go back and talk about the preparation on, you know, guys' favorite move, what the defense did, yeah, the specifics, like just in their preparation. Yeah, we got to go back and kind of digest all this information. We'll have testing numbers, uh, we'll have measurements that we haven't had. Um, that'll start to change a few things on the draft board. Um, you don't want to change too many things based on the testing, uh, but it will alter um, some guys and the value that they have and the positions that we project them to play. And I'm moving some of these guys around on the board. Gosh. <laughs> Come look at this real quick. Let me do it before they start running. Yeah, yeah starting to shuffle it. And then we hit the road and do pro days. We'll spend more time with the prospects, um, get more time with them, see them do different drills at, at their school. Um, and we'll just continue to bring that information. Um, and then we bring all of our scouts back in the building and, and we really start to set our draft board um, and feel comfortable with, with what it looks like going into the draft. What do you think about him? Mm, love that dude. Well, the Bears are gonna be talked about from here until the NFL draft. They are in an enviable position. They're gonna to be topic number one.